got another paper three question for the playlist. So this one deals with reaction rates and equilibrium. Hope you like the video and if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you think about subscribing to the channel? Anyway, as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. So we'll start by explaining the different initial rates at the two temperatures. Initial rate is the rate at the start of the reaction. So time equals zero. You can see that the higher temperature, the 90 degree curve, it's got a higher gradient than the dotted line, the 50 degrees curve. So we just need to say something like this. Initial rate is higher at 90 degrees C. Particles have got more kinetic energy. And so there are more frequent collisions with energy greater than or equal to the activation energy. Moving on to the other thing I've got to talk about, the sign of delta H for the forward reaction. So I've just pasted the um, equilibrium there. So if you have a look at the lower temperature, you can see that over time it ends up at a higher absorbance. So that means there's a higher concentration of this coh 2062 plus because we were told above that the absorbance is linked to the concentration of that. So what does that mean? The lower temperature must be favoring this forward reaction. So that means the forward reaction must be exothermic. Low temperatures always favor the exothermic reaction. And obviously that's got a negative delta H sign. So I'll just write that up now. So something like this is fine. 50 degrees C generates a higher concentration of the cobalt hexaaqua 2 plus species. Low temperature therefore favours the forward exothermic reaction. So the sign for the delta H is negative. Moving on to part B. So we've got this sort of quite unusual graph here. Um, obviously all linked to the equilibrium from before. First thing I'm going to talk about is why does the chloride concentration drop sharply at T1? So you can see the graph so it plummets um, at T1. So what have they done at T1? They've added silver nitrate. That's got silver ions in it. And silver ions can react with chloride ions and form that um, solid white precipitate silver chloride. So that's why the concentration of chloride ions drops. So either of these would be fine. So in words, silver ions from silver nitrate react with chloride ions to form silver chloride. Or you could even just put the equation. And for the last part, I'm just going to keep the graph on the screen, just to help me talk through what um, what the answer is. Uh, we've got to talk about how the concentrations of the three species changes after T1. So remember, at T1, the silver nitrate's been added. That's lowered the concentration of the chloride ions. So the equilibrium is going to shift in this forwards direction. So what's that going to do to the concentration of the cobalt tetrachloride? That's going to drop because the equilibrium is going that way. So you can see there's a drop there. The um, cobalt hexa aqua 2 plus is going to increase. The equilibrium is going that way. You can see it increases. And you can see that the decrease of that is kind of matched by the increase in concentration of that. And that's down to the fact that we've got a one to one ratio between those two. If we think about the chloride concentration, the equilibrium's going this way, so this is gonna go up, but this has gone up significantly more. It's actually gone up four times more. If you sort of count the lines, it's gone up. So the concentration of chloride ions has increased four times the others, and that's again down to this ratio here. So for every one of those, it's four of those. So here's how I've written it up. I'm saying equilibrium shifts to the right after T1. Concentration of the cobalt tetrachloride decreases by the same amount as the concentration of cobalt hexaqua 2 increases. And then the final thing, the concentration of the chloride ions also increases, but by four times that of the hexaqua.